David Collins is keeping an eye on these issues. He joins us now live from Annapolis with the very latest. David? Well, what's gaining a lot of people's interest is that some of these bills are on the governor's legislative priority list. Anyone has any amendments or any questions? High-profile environmental bills are now getting the full attention of the General uh, Assembly. A measure doubling the flush tax from $30 to $60 a year is on the House floor. The money will be used to help clean up the Chesapeake Bay. A companion bill coming to the floor requires local jurisdictions to collect a stormwater utility fee. This satisfies a federal mandate to curb pollution runoff. If they don't do it, the state will get fined. Both chambers are tackling legislation that limits septic tank use. Opponents are trying to gut the bill with amendments. It's just a bad idea. It's not about cleaning up the Chesapeake Bay. It's an anti-jobs bill because it kills jobs in a local area, takes away property rights for away from citizens, and it also takes away local control. So it's not, it's not an environmental bill. It's a land use bill. Supporters argue the measure will actually tamp down the need for higher taxes. If you start dropping a, uh, housing developments on septics in the middle of cornfields, you're eventually going to have to put in schools, you're going to have to build roads to connect them to other state roads, and it's going to force the state to come up with more revenue. A vote on the governor's wind energy bill is on the horizon. The measure creates a framework to install wind turbines off the coast of Ocean City. A bill related to fracking, a process to extract natural gas from Marcellus Shale is now in the hands of the Senate. It assesses a $15 per acre fee on energy companies. The money would pay for a study on best practices. The money will go to the Departments of um, Natural Resources and the Maryland Department of the Environment. Those two agencies have oversight on shale gas drilling from an environmental perspective and from a permit issuing perspective. However, Western Maryland legislators oppose, arguing it could deter interest. One of the major consequences could be that a lot of the companies would decide they're just going to let their leases expire and leave the state. A final report with recommendations related to the impact of drilling is due in 2014. Now tomorrow the Senate takes up the governor's septic bill and the governor's measure to uh, advance wind power in the state of Maryland could get a House committee vote possibly Saturday. Reporting live from Annapolis, David Collins, WBAL-TV 11 News.